Welcome back to Metaphor Math, and we're on to 7E in our Introduction to Rosenlich series, um, where we're proving every problem in Chapter 1, the set theory chapter of Introduction to Analysis by, by Rosenlich. And um, in this problem, again, we're, we're showing not, not, a, not a set of quality here, but we're showing that A is a subset of the inverse image of the image of A under F. So we're showing, we're showing that A is a subset is a subset of the inverse image of the image of A under F. And in this in this problem in this video I'm also going to show I'm also going to show why A is not equal to the inverse image of the image of A under F. And, and what in, in other words I'm going to say that the inverse image I'm going to show that the inverse image of the image of A is not a subset of A, because uh, we're showing that A is a subset of the inverse image of the image of A, but I'm going to show that the inverse image of the image of A is not a subset of A, therefore that they're not equal, these two sets aren't equal. But first let's show what they asked us to show. So we want to show that A is a subset of the inverse image of the image of A. So if we can show that every element in A must also be in here, the inverse image of the image of A, then we've, then we've proven what they've asked us. So let's just take an element x and a, and if we can prove that every element with this property must also be in the inverse image of the image of a, then we've shown that every element in a is in the inverse image of the image of a, therefore that a is a subset of the inverse image of the image of a, because every element in a has this property, has this property right here of being in a. If you're in a bag, then your property, you have the property of being in a bag, <laughs> or a purse, or, or anything. So, let x be an a, then this implies that f of x is equal to some y in the set y. Now, let's, re let's remember what our property of the image of a under f is. It's exactly the set containing all y and y such that there exists an x and a such that f of x is equal to y. And look at what we have here f of x is equal to y, and, and there exists an x in a such that f of x is equal to y, and this implies, this implies that y is in f of a, but y is equal to f of x, so this implies that f of x, f of x is equal to a. Let me, let me re-say this all again. So, so if f of x is equal to y, and we know that x is in a, so th then that means that there exists an x in a, because we've just said it right here, we, we, this was our original hypothesis here, or our original supposition was that, that x is in a. So then, if, 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 x is, if, if there exists an x in a, such that f of x is equal to y, then that immediately implies that y is in f of a. And since y is equal to f of x, f of x is in a all using, all hinging on this definition of the image of a set under f. So, moving on here, if f of x is in a, then this implies, or excuse me, not f of x is in a, f of x is in the image, f of x is in the image of a under f, because, because f of x is equal to y, and y is in the image of a under f. So f of x is in the image of a under f, and this implies, you might be seeing where I can go with this, if f of x, the image of x, is in, or excuse me, not equal to, I mistyped it here, f of x is in the image of a under f. And this implies that x is in the inverse image of the image of a under f. And the reason we can say that is that x is being mapped by f to f of a. This, this is a set. We can, we can relabel this set maybe u or something. f is being mapped by f to the set f of a. Another way of saying that is f is in the set containing all elements that are mapped by f to the set c. So if f is in the set of elements that are mapped by f to the set C, in other words, it's in the set of all X such that F of X is in C, 
Again, in other words, that's the inverse image of C under F. So it is X is in the set in X, big set X, the domain of F. It's in the set that is contained in X such that the, all the elements in that set are mapped by F to C. So that means that X, or and, and that was C in this case, but X, X is in the set in X, X is in the set in big X, such that the set in X is, and so F of A is in, is contained in X, right? Or excuse me, not F of A, F of inverse of F of A is contained in X, right? Because F of A is in, F of A is in Y. And so the inverse image of a set in Y must be in X. So X is in this, this set that, such that the image of all the elements in this set map to F of A. And this is exactly what we're saying here. We're saying that the image of this X is in F of A the image of A under F. Therefore, X is in the set of all elements that are mapped by F to the image of A under F. Or another way of saying that is X is in the inverse image of the image of A. So we've just proven what they've asked us to prove. We've just proved that A is a subset of the inverse image of the image of A under F. But now we want to talk about, now we want to talk about why they're not equal. So we, we want to prove and another way of saying that, and we want to prove, let me switch colors here for, for variety. Uh, we, want to, we want to prove, we prove, we prove that A is not equal to the inverse image of the image of A. And in other words, in other words, we're going to prove that this is not true. That the inverse image of the image of A is not a subset of A. So, like before, suppose, let's do this by con contradiction. I've, I've talked about uh, proof by contradiction in previous videos. And when we do a proof by contradiction, we're going to suppose that this, sta this statement is true. Well, really, well, really we're going to suppose that A contains F inverse of the, in the inverse image of the image of F of A. That is to say, another another way of saying this is we're gonna we're gonna prove, or that this that this is not true. Rather, sorry, we're gonna we're gonna suppose. So we we prove this. We're gonna prove this statement, and in order to prove this statement, because we've already proved that 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 A is a subset of the inverse image of the image of A, and in order to prove that this is not this is true, in order to prove that this is true, we're gonna prove that this is true. That this statement is true right here. So, suppose, suppose that this statement is not true. That is to say that A does contain the inverse image of the image of A. Suppose that A does contain the inverse image of the image of A. Then that means, then that means that this is, this is true for any F and for any A. For any possible case F, for any possible case of how we choose A, and for any possible case of how we choose the overarching domain X, and for any possible case of how we choose the overarching codomain Y. So no matter what, no matter what we choose for F, no matter what we choose for X, no matter what we choose for Y, no matter what we choose for A, this statement must hold. If we're, if we're going to say that this is true, then it has, to tr it has to be true for all possible cases. And so our goal here is to try to find a counterexample. We're going to try to find a counterexample. A counterexample, a case, a specific case. We're going to try to find like a specific case where this statement doesn't hold, therefore disproving that this statement holds for all possible cases, and therefore disproving this statement. So, a counterexample. Let's let's kind of try to formulate a possible function f such that this this will not hold. So suppose suppose f is not one to one, and I'm going to further suppose that f of u is equal to f of v and f of u and f of v equals some y such that y is in f of a but u is in a 
and V is not an A. And this seems very contrived, but you'll see why this, this is going to work in a little bit. So U is an A, so therefore why there exists some U, that since there exists some U in A, such that F of U is in, is equal to Y, and excuse my language here, I don't mean to be saying F U, I mean to be saying F of U. Excuse my language there. But we're, we're, we're talking about, since there exists some U in A, such that F of U is equal to Y, that implies that Y must be an F of A. But there's another V that's not an A that equals Y. A, a, a situation, what, what this, if, we would, if we're illustrating this with diagrams, maybe we have our, our, our subset, this is X right here, and this is A right here, and maybe this is U, oh no, excuse me, that's, that would be V. Maybe we have V that's outside of A, and we have U that's inside of A. And V is being mapped to Y, and so is U. So is U. So here's Y, and that's B. They're both mapping to Y. And Y is obviously contained in this set F of A, which is right here. So this is an, kind of an image of what, what we're describing here. So let's go on with this. So let's suppose, so we've, we've just contrived this possible case of F. And if this statement is to be true, then this statement must hold for this F. Even though it's very contrived, it must hold for this F because it has to hold for all possible F. So suppose that the statement star, star is true. Suppose that star is true. Okay, then this implies, this implies that if x is in the inverse image of the image of A, then it must also be in A, that x is in A. So, if x is in the inverse image of the image of A, then this implies that f of x is in. So, like, like before, if x is in the inverse image of the image of A, and this is, we're going all the way back to our definition up here, if x is in the inverse image of C, then that means that x is in the set of all x such that f of x is in C. So we can do this, the same thing over here. If f of x is in the inverse image of, of f of A, then x is in the set, or, or th that implies that x is in the set such that f of x is, is in f of A. So f f of x is in f of a. Another way of saying this is, is x is in the set such that contain all elements in the domain x, the domain x, big X, such that the image of those x's in that set map to f of a. So f of the image of x or f of x is in f of a. So if f of x is in f of a, then suppose, suppose x is equal to v. Suppose x is equal to v. Then this implies, this implies that v, since, since v, since v is not an a, but f of is not an a, but v, f of v, is an A, so we're totally allowed to say is an F of A. F of V is an F and A. So if, if X is equal to V, then X is not an A. Because we just, F of X is the same, this, this implies that F of X equals F of V, since X is equal to V. And F of V is certainly an F of A, right? Because F of V is equal to some Y, and this y is also equal to f of u. And since u is an a, then y must be an f of a. So therefore, f of v must be an f of a. But v is not an a. v is not an a. v is not an a. And since v is equal to x, since I'm just supposing that x is equal to v, and since this, this statement, this statement right here, this implication right here, if x is in f, the inverse image of the image of a, 
that implies that x is an a. This must hold for all x. But look at this. I just found an x such that this statement does not hold if x is equal to v. And if x is equal to v, then f of v is certainly in f of a, but x, v, but v is not an a. Therefore, therefore x is not an a, or I've already said that, f, just to, for, emphasize, for emphasis, x is not an a. So therefore, this statement cannot possibly hold. We've just found a particular f and a particular a such that this statement does not hold. And then within this particular f, we found a particular v such that this statement must hold. Because if we claim the statement, if we claim, if we claim, if we claim that this statement is true, if we claim that this statement is true, then every x in the inverse image of the image of a must also be an a. But I, look at this. I just found an x such that this statement does not hold true. I found an x such that this statement does not hold true, and that x is precisely v, the element v that's in um, the element v that's in the inverse image of the image of a. Um, and and we've just disproven it. And so so this is by supposing this we've we've arrived we've arrived at a contradiction. We've arrived at a contradiction. So this statement cannot possibly be true, since if we were to suppose it would be true, since star, if we were to suppose that star, the statement star, is true, then we arrive at a contradiction, then that means that this statement can't possibly be true.